that. Now it is. Okay, so let's start with question. I found my coffee. Thank you. Fifteen. Oh, um, I'm sorry. This is the last call for these. No, for these. Last call. Okay, we're going to go backwards starting with question 16. Today's agenda is only to do questions 16 and 15. Um, so we're starting with 16. We have this series here. Um, X to the N, N to the N over N factorial. And for part A, we're looking for the radius of convergence. So a couple thoughts. Thought number one, this isn't geometric. So we can't actually use a shortcut with the geometric. We actually have to use a ratio test. The other realization is that we can actually do an abbreviated ratio test. It's okay because we only need the radius. So if we're, if we're not really interested in the interval of convergence and we're only interested in the radius, it makes no sense to actually do the endpoint tests. So we're going to skip the endpoint tests just for this problem. So let's do a ratio test. The limit as n approaches infinity, x to the n plus 1, n plus 1 to the n plus 1 power, yikes, over n plus 1 factorial. And that's going to be n factorial on x to the n, n to the n. We'd like to force that to be less than 1 because we want to know our, our interval of convergence. Okay, so let's simplify things. Um, I'm going to do this one rather slow because there are a lot of moving parts here. That's x to the n times n. This is n plus 1 times n plus 1 to the nth on n plus 1. Oh, you know, this was supposed to be an x. n plus 1, n factorial. There's that corresponding n factorial on x to the n n to the nth power. Again, forced to be less than 1. Okay, we see a number of things canceling out. First thing we see canceling out are the x to the n's. The next thing we see canceling out are the n plus 1's and the n factorials. So that, what does that leave us? Well, that leaves us this x, which will stick on the outside now. And that leaves us with n plus 1 to the nth on n to the nth. I'm going to take this opportunity to get rid of these absolute values and to do a little bit of simplification. So first of all, um, these are all, n is assumed to be a positive number since it's increasing. So we don't need the absolute values. Second of all, the numerator and denominator are to the same power.
So I can kind of write them together like this. At which point we need to stop our main problem and take a look at a side problem. We need to figure out this limit and this is actually not an easy limit. So let's go to our side problem, figure out that limit. side problem. What is the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 to the nth over n? And let's analyze this because we have a power approaching infinity. This is awfully suspicious. As n goes to infinity, this over here goes to 1, first degree on top of first degree. So this goes to 1 to an infinite power. That's, that's cause for L'Hopital. So we're going to prepare for this. We want the limit as n approaches infinity of y is going to be equal to the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of mm -hmm. n plus 1 on n to the nth power. Okay, and using our tricks from chapter 8, we know we should know what to do here. We'll take a log of y, and this is n times the natural log of, well that simplifies to 1 plus 1 over n, doesn't it? check our indeterminate form, that's infinity times, and the natural log of 1 is 0. Again, that's an indeterminate form that we're going to rearrange so we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now we have infinity on infinity. We're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of a natural log is 1 on top of the times the derivative derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of 1 on n is <coughs> negative 1 on n squared. Man, that's such a good one to memorize. I feel like I say that every time. So hopefully everyone's got it memorized by now. All right, that simplifies really really, really nicely. That's, oh, you know, I forgot to put limit. So sorry. So sorry about that. one on one plus one over n. I'm not going to bother simplifying that more because as n approaches infinity, one on top of n goes to zero. So this limit is one on one, which is one. Awesome. 
So we've just shown that the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of y equals 1. Which is the same as showing that the limit as n approaches infinity of y is equal to e. e to the first power, but just e. And that's the end of the side problem right there. Back to our main problem. We want the limit as, no, absolute value of x times the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 on top of n to the nth power. We want to force that to be less than 1. We found this limit. This limit is e. So the absolute value of x times e should be less than 1. Absolute value of x is therefore less than 1 over e. And that should tell us everything we need to know about the series and more. This tells us the center of the series. This tells us the radius of the series, which is actually what we're after. It's 1 over e. And this also tells us the interval, interval of convergence. 1 over e, yeah. That tells us a lot of the things we need to know. That takes care of part A. Let's get to part B. Okay, so part B, I'm going to be really smart. I'm going to outsmart this test. All I have to do is just read a few extra words. I'm going to read part, both part B and C. If I use the first three terms to estimate f of negative 1 over 3, estimate the error in part B. Okay, if I want to do all of that and estimate the error, I'm actually going to need four terms. Okay. So, we'll do all of this together. F of negative one-third can be approximated by, now I forgot how this goes. What is series? Let's see, and it starts at one, so we have one times negative one-third plus when n is two we get two squared over two which is two negative one-third squared plus but do you want me to maybe I should write that down two squared on two factorial and might as well just do this three cubed on three factorial negative one-third cubed plus four to the fourth on four factorial negative one-third to the fourth power. Oh, you know I was going to do this in a separate color. Four 
4 to the 4th on 4 factorial, negative 1 fourth to the 4th power, 1 third to the 4th power. I'm just going to kind of put this all together. So this is approximately equal to negative 1 third plus, is that 2 over 9? Minus, gosh, a lot of threes are canceling out, right? That's one six, right? Yes. Green plus, ooh, gosh, <coughs> four times four is sixteen, so that's sixteen times sixteen over twenty-four times 1 over 9 times 9, right? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> so f of negative 1 third, it can be approximated by, oh, this is all go to 18, right? 3 times 6. So negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 eighteenths. Plus, I guess I have an opportunity to simplify this now, don't I? It doesn't simplify, does it? No, it doesn't. 256 over, I have no idea. <laughs> Wait, we can cancel twos here, right? We can cancel four. No, we can cancel eight. So two times that is 32. And then we're left with a three, three times 81, which is 243, I think. Yep. Yay. Yay. OK, so let's answer the actual question. The actual question is, give me an estimate for negative 1 third. And that estimate is 5 over 18. Negative 5 over 18. Thank you. Part C. Estimate the error. So this is a, an alternating series. So we need to use alternating error. Actually, putting the words alternating series error are important to write. That way, the reader knows you're not just making this up. <coughs> you can cite some kind of a theorem. OK, so the error. needs to be less than the fourth term, right? Therefore, the error should be less than 32 out of 243. That's it. How'd that go? Man, I'm beat. No. 
Where's my clipboard? <laughs> They're gonna think we're lazy. Lazy, <laughs> impatient, and short memory. They know you. They know that the high school student is lazy, impatient, and have a short memory. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Okay, let's look at 15. Fifteen, we have f of x is equal to one over one minus two x. Great. Part A, let's write out the first four terms of the series. A. This is a geometric sum, right? You need to quickly recognize that as a geometric sum. The sooner you recognize that as a geometric sum, the better off you're going to be. What is the first term? What is the ratio? Perfect. Okay, so f of x is going to be equal to, the first term is 1, 1 times 2x is 2x, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, 4x squared times 2x is 8x cubed plus dot dot dot, 2x to the n power. One note is a ser we have the whole series, the infinite series, so it is exactly equal to the infinite series. If we have a polynomial, then we have an approximation. But if we have the infinite series, we have an exact equal. Right, I think that takes care of A, right? Yeah, let's go. Part B. What is the interval of convergence in part A? Again, geometric series. Therefore, the absolute value of the ratio needs to be less than 1. Absolute value of 2x must be less than 1. absolute value of x needs to be less than one half. You've just found our three things, right? The center is zero. The radius is one half, which is the question that you're actually answering. And then the interval is negative one-half to one-half. Again, they're not asking for the center or the interval, but if you know it, they want the interval? Yes. Oh, okay. They want the interval. Good. Do you need to test the endpoints? No. <coughs> no need to test the interval. No need to test endpoints. I'm doing that right now. Endpoints. Because geometric series. Okay. If you used a ratio test, then you would test the endpoints. Geometric series will never, never converge at the endpoints. Part C. Find f of negative one fourth.
Do they want an estimate or the exact value? No? It says find f of negative one fourth. Period. Learn English. Find f of negative one fourth. Period. That's the exact value. Exact value. Okay. Exact values come from the function. <laughs> Approximate comes from the series. polynomial. Okay. Find f of negative one-fourth period. That's the exact value. Do we have the function? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. f of negative one-fourth is equal to one over one minus two times negative one-fourth. I did this math during second period, so don't be, t during fifth period, don't be too impressed. The answer is two thirds. Okay. How many terms are needed to get, to estimate this with an error not exceeding 0 .001? Okay. So error less than 0 0.01. Well, it's one, it's two thirds plus zero point two thirds Okay, so they're looking for the error now, right? Is this an alternating series? No. I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's gonna be an alternating series. Okay, this is going to be an alternating series. Let's compute the first few terms, okay? F of negative one-fourth is equal to one minus, I forgot, two over one-fourth is one-half. Four over one-fourth squared, one-fourth. Minus, I forgot what this is. One eighth. One eighth. Okay. This is an alternating series, right? Yes. Because of this. Okay. So basically, we need to generate terms until we get, we need to generate terms. until we get a term less than 1 over 100. This is nice. We see the pattern forming, don't we? See the pattern, right? So f of negative one-fourth is equal to one plus, no, minus one-half plus one-fourth minus one-eighth. Is one-eighth less than one over 100? No. Plus one over 32. Is one over 32 less than one over 100? 
Sixteenth. Is one sixteenth less than one over a hundred? No. Is one over thirty-two less than one over a hundred? No. One over sixty-four, is that less than one over a hundred? No. One over one twenty-eight, is that less than one over one hundred? Yes, it is. There's my error. And this is my polynomial. How many terms do we need? Oh, hey, that's it, isn't it? How did it go? Not bad. Not bad? Are we allowed to have a calculator on the test? No. So the numbers will be like.